subscribe. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Uh, can a LLC be uh, like own assets and things like that, like a corporation can? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And that's that's actually one like really common in real estate. A lot of people uh, they'll suggest that. You know, every time you go in, whether it be flip a property or own a property, you want to own it in the name of an LLC. So I can have 123 Street LLC own my property. And it can own multiple properties. It can own one property. And really, that's all at somebody's discretion. So it really is based off of the person. And that's one of the reasons you want to have a whole team of advisors to tell you, okay, if I'm talking to my tax guy, you know, what are the tax implications of doing something like that? And that's really going to be your go-to for a lot of that. Um, but there are all sorts of other people that you want to include in the mix. And that's what I call my money team. So my money team really advises me on all the different aspects that will impact my business. So the biggest difference between an LLC and a corporation is pretty much how you get paid. Or not paid, but the taxes portion of it. Yes, I would say yes on that. Um, not exactly how you get paid, right? Because again, the LLC itself can operate as a company, as a corporation specifically, um, or it can operate again, like we talked about single member or double member as a partnership. What it comes down to now is what happens when you do get paid. That's the fundamental difference, okay. right? A corporation pays a specific tax rate on that income and a single member gets taxed like a sole proprietor. So what does that actually mean, right? Number one, uh, or I guess number two misconception that I want to dispel here is like every dollar being the same. Not true. Every dollar is not the same. The dollar that you make as a sole proprietor is not seen the same way to a limited uh, liability partnership uh, that's structured, right, as a, a corporation. Um, or as corporation and not to a corporation itself. So what does this mean exactly, right? And because really like to Denisha's point, because she was asking about how you get paid. If somebody writes you a check and I write it out to Denisha Brown mm -hmm. is different than writing out to uh, Denisha Inc. Mm -hmm. You know, your company itself is different than you yourself. So the way those get taxed is very different. And I think that's what he was about to break down. Exactly. So when that money comes in to you, uh, you're going to receive it how you receive it, right? The functions of the entities can be the same. You can have a juice bar that's a, a single person owned. You can have a juice bar that's owned by a company, right? Um, but what happens when someone comes to your juice bar and they spend that $3.59 to buy your juice? Well, it's all about how you break down and separate that money. You can classify it differently. With a single member LLC, which is taxed like a sole proprietor, one person business, you only have one option, unfortunately. <laughs> and it's called earned income. That money you receive from doing business is just ordinary income. That's it. So just like when you work a job, right? And you go, you get your paycheck, and you do your taxes at the end of the year, you file a 1040. Some people do a 1040 EZ, or some people do, uh, as an entrepreneur, most people are looking at uh, what's called a Schedule C. And that basically is just breaking down how you receive the income, right? I made this much money from sales, I had this much money in expenses, and I just listed there. That's it. By myself, as a single operator, all I have is one option to code that money, and it's taxed at one rate, uh, which as an entrepreneur is 15.3%, I believe. Okay. Yeah. 15, right. I know your number. You got, right. You know your yeah, it's, it's serious out here because you so, do not want to get caught up on that tax train. <laughs> How do you avoid getting so much taxes taken out? I know, like, as one of the first things you think about as an entrepreneur is I got to pay the state taxes, right? Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things is I got all this money coming in. How do I calculate what do I need to put aside for tax purposes or, you know, how do I write off expenses? Like, 
give me the tax break. Like, yeah. I know y'all may not know that deep into it because y'all not tax people, but yeah. you yeah. have an idea yeah. of, sure, right. <laughs> this is not tax advice. We're right. not tax advisors, but you know, I don't pay taxes. So, right. Yeah. But, right. So as uh, entrepreneurs or, you know, owning your own business, you know, in the back of your head, how much money you need to have a side for your business based off of your projected income or whatever that might look like. So talk to me about that. Yeah, so I want to just say one piece of it, um, just to kind of finish the complete thought, and then I'll pass it to Jordan to really break down the expense side of things. Um, but again, that classification of that dollar, if you are in a uh, S corporation type thing or a C corporation type setup where you ha can do what's called stock, right? It, it gives you some options, right? And how you classify your money. So we'll talk about stock a little later in the conversation and ownership of the company. But again, to that conversation of classifying the dollar, right? So proprietor, I make a buck. It's a dollar. It's taxed at that 15.3. And I pay my social security, pay my Medicare, just like working a job. Everybody pays that. You look at your check, you see that. Now, if I'm corporation, as corporation, because of that whole shareholder thing, because of the ability to have stock, right? It means I have some vested interest I can give away to people. So I can classify my dollar differently. And that's how I can save on tax. Portions of my money will be classified as ordinary income, earned income, just like the sole proprietor. But then the other portion I can classify as what's called a disbursement. Basically what happens is your people get together, your partnership, your group, and your board, if you will, and you guys say, hey, is, at the end of the quarter, we did well. We want to give some of that money to each other. Um, and so you, you release that cash, or maybe it's actual shares, but let's say it's cash, just for ease of the example, you release that cash to each other as a disbursement. So you get 33, I get 33, you get your 33 and a third, and we're good. And what happens now is that's taxed as what's called a capital gain. Okay. And so, that. yeah, I know it was a lot <laughs> and I really want to make sure we're not missing people. Right. So we got our ordinary income over here, 15.3 plus your Medicare and social usually comes out to about 30%. So you still have to pay Medicare, social, all those oh, different yeah. things as a business owner. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, so you're telling me the federal and the state still want my money. They still gonna want it. Oh, okay. So, right. But yeah. you get to pay less, right? Because the disbursement is taxed differently. Your first $40,000 that you get as a disbursement actually isn't taxed at all federally, 0%. But after that, um, in between, I think, 40 and up to, I believe it's like 400000 or 300000 or so. Please fact check me, people, in the comment section. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, right around there is, I think, it's 15%. And then I think at the max is like 20%. But now you can see that 20% is a lot less than that whole 30% because you don't have that social security, you don't have to pay that Medicare. So that is one way to kind of lower that tax liability. Okay. But, you know, if I was somebody who was giving you advice in a, in, a, in, a, in a legal way, which I'm not representing you as that person, I would tell you that you definitely should not go out and start your business structure just for a tax break. Because that would be illegal, and we wouldn't tell nobody to do nothing illegal. <laughs> but Jordan, break down the expense side of things and, uh, and tell us about that. Um, so kind of like what you were talking about is some of the, I would say some of the big boy stuff, some of the higher level stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but I think, you know, for a lot of people just on day to day, a lot of people are so props who are moving to, you know, larger businesses. Maybe they're hiring a couple people. But overall, like, you know, just keeping it basic, when you're operating your business, the government incentivizes entrepreneurs and business owners to continue to create jobs. Job creation and improving the economy is really like the biggest, the biggest uh, tax incentive. You know, the more you're doing that, the more tax breaks they're going to give you. So like what we were talking about as far as like your structure, your structures are important, but it also goes with, you know, how you're allocating all the money that you're getting. Now, any of the money that you're getting and bringing in, you are spending that, and every time you spend that dollar, the government says, well, hey, look, if you're spending that money in your business to help grow your business or help create more jobs, we want to incentivize that. So we want to give you really uh, some breaks. We want to give you, you know, give you a handout just to continue to keep doing that. We want to incentivize you to do that. So every time you go and, all right, back to the ice cream shop, we're buying ice cream 
that's products and, and materials that we need for to operate our business. So on our materials, on any of the, all those purchases, those are expenses. Every time you make an expense or you have an expense incurred cost of you know the run of the mill doing business, the government says, okay, well look, those are your expenses. You're gonna get a, a deduction on your total income. So now for the year we make whatever, let's keep the numbers simple, $100,000. $100,000 and we spend $20,000 on...